And welcome to a very special edition of Volan Vlog. Uh, I'm Kristen, also known as Volan Vine on Ravelry and pretty much everywhere else on the web. Uh, and today I thought I would just do a quick vlog sharing with you uh, my magnificent haul from Rhinebeck, which is a awesome sheep show that happens but once a year uh, in Rhinebeck, New York. It's a pretty big deal um, and I try to go every single year uh, and it was just so much fun I don't even know where to begin um, but I first I feel like I should begin by saying thank you thank you thank you to everybody uh, who showed up to the Indie Untangled trunk show which uh, was my this is my first year vending there it's a trunk show that happens the night before Rhinebeck weekend it's pretty close to the fairgrounds and it's just a really fun event showcasing indie dyers and fiber artists and just a fun night out I think you know to just pre-game for Rhinebeck basically but first I just want to give a huge thank you to the Indie Untangled staff my neighboring vendors you guys are amazing and you were super helpful um, um, that's what I love about you know everybody there. It's like everyone was willing to help out each other, and it was just it was amazing. Um, and I also just want to say a huge thank you to everybody who showed up and bought yarn from me. Uh, thank you for waiting in line. <laughs> Next year, I promise uh, that I will have more people helping me out uh, to check check everyone out because I understand there was a huge line and people waited in line for quite some time. So thank you so much for waiting um, and everyone who just said hello and had just one the most wonderful things to say about my podcast and my yarns. Thank you so much. Uh, it really reminds me of, you know, why I love doing what I do um, and makes me want to do it even more. <laughs> um, so thank you so much. Um, so without further ado, let's get into my haul. Uh, first, we'll, we'll, we'll tackle the Indian Tangled haul first. So, um, well, first I should probably show you the bag. There's a tote bag that's brimming with yarn and fiber and just awesomeness in general. Um, so basically, one of uh, my one of the vendors that was right next to me um, was, let me see, I'm totally blanking on names, Clay by Laura. She was, her booth was right next to me and I couldn't stop like looking over because she had the most beautiful pottery um, and she had a yarn bowl with my name all over it and you're gonna see why in a second. I, I had to have this in my life. It's, first of all, it's mauve. It's a mauve yarn bowl and um, I don't know, it just reminds me of like either octopus tentacles or just something out of a Tim Burton movie. It's very like Nightmare Before Christmas-esque and I don't know, I just had to have it in my life. So it came home with me, um, but she also had these awesome little tiny, you know, dishes that I, you know, I, I was in the market for, to begin with, I was in the market for like a tiny little bowl just to put random stuff in. So, and I saw this and I just, I had to have it. So uh, <laughs> clearly it had to come home with me, but um, yeah, she just had really awesome fun stuff. Um, and she stamps all of her, all of her um, pottery on the bottom and your, her info. And here's her card. So Laura, it was really, really wonderful meeting you. And yeah, so definitely check out her shop. Um, she has a blog. I will post a link to it in uh, my show notes, and you know you can find all these vendors that I'm talking about uh, over there. Uh, but yeah, so I'm very pleased with that purchase. Marsha from One Geek to Craft Them All. Uh, she gave me some of her stitch markers. These were the uh, Indian Tangled. I believe these are the Indian Tangled special. There, there were more stitch markers on here, but they're currently living on my. Um, my what do you call it vintage prim hat right now so um but these are them and they're just so well no this one's mine the, i put the my wine cork bottle on there but so ignore that one but there's a little tiny skein of yarn and then there's a tree and then just like these really awesome purple purple beads so and again the, the corkscrew one is mine so that just found its way on there somehow i don't know so thank you marcia these were awesome um, and then of course I had to stop by White Birch Fiber Arts because she has like the most amazing self-striping yarns and gradients and I could not resist getting this puppy right here. I don't know the focus. But yeah, you, you can see you can see why it came home with me. It was all about that color right there. But um 
She doesn't, uh, I don't think she gives these colorway names, but this is an 80% 80, uh, 80 superwash merino, 20% silk, uh, and there's 600 yards in this puppy right here, so I have no idea what I'm going to make with it. Maybe a shawl? Maybe a pie shawl? I don't know, it could be an awesome pie shawl. Um, and then another uh, neighboring uh, vendor that was right next to me, and I'm totally blanking on your name, I'm so sorry, but she was so incredibly helpful. She helped me hang my sign up and everything because apparently gaffer tape, which is, Pretty much, it's utility tape. It's like duct tape on crack, basically. Was not enough to st get my sign up on the wall and stay there. So she helped me like tie it down and everything. But um, I'm sorry, I'm blinking on your name again. Uh, but it's I thought she was Oink Pigments, which I've heard about before. I believe uh, Jenny and Devin talked about it on their show, uh, Handmade in Woolen. But um, I had to pick up a skein of her lace yarn, and it is absolutely beautiful. Let me see. You can get that to focus that would be awesome there we go like pigments and i didn't even i just saw the color and i grabbed it and i purchased it and it was only when i got home that i looked at the colorway name oh guys it's called you're not even going to be able to see this but it's called movilis darling it was meant to be it was meant to be and it's 100 percent superwash merino uh lace it's their oink lace space 820 yards so this might just have to be the Luga shawl. I've been wanting to cast that shawl on every, ever since I saw um, Carlene from Made with Carlene Energy and um, Gabby from the Once Upon a Corgi podcast cast theirs on. So I don't know, this might have to be it. <sighs> so yeah, but how awesome is that that it's called Movilis Dolly? <laughs> Love it. Um, and then I would be remiss not to stop by uh, Skinny Dipping, which is a brand of which um, was a brand that I was introduced to at Gage Intention. Uh, uh, Michelle from Gage Intention had actually stocked up on a whole bunch of Skinny Dipping, and that's when I fell in love. And I met Christine. Hi, Christine. I don't know if you're watching, but uh, it was really awesome getting to meet you in person. And um, her colorways are just incredible, and you'll see why in a minute if you've never seen her yarns. But um, I saw these three colorways together, yeah, but these are her um, merino singles, they're just 100% superwash merino wool, and this colorway, I love the name, she has, she's really good at naming her colorways, um, she, some of them are really funny, uh, this one is called Space Pants, and you can see, it, they really look like Space Pants, just, you know, if you've ever seen like Outer Space Spandex Pants, yeah, you can tell why, um, and this one is called Olives. You know I'm a sucker for just like these yellow greens, like these deep, rich yellow jade greens. They're just so awesome. Um, and then this one's called Blue Raspberry Slurpee, and it's just so pretty. Yes. So, um, and I have obviously I have no idea what I'm gonna make with these, but they are going together. Be it a cardigan, be it a shawl, I don't know yet. Um, so we shall see. But I love. I, I just wanna ogle them because I just love seeing these colorways together so yay I love these um and I believe that yeah that was pretty much my haul from India Untangled uh, I barely got a chance to walk around I there was a brief moment before the actual rush of before the crowd rush so I kind of moseyed around and got to you know got to stop by White Birch Riper Arts and then I had to come back to my booth and finish setting up uh, Dennis helped me I don't know if I meant I didn't mention that at the beginning but my husband Dennis he helped me uh, he, he drove obviously he <laughs> he drove us all the way up there uh, helped me set up and then he was pretty much ringing people up uh, freeing me up to just chat with everybody and it was just he was he was amazing um, and super glad I married him. <laughs> so uh, I don't think Dennis is watching, but I love you, honey, and you are amazing. <laughs> so, but yes, um, he had a lot of fun. He got a workout for sure, but uh, yeah, it was it was a lot of fun. So uh, he's definitely up for it next year as well. So, um, but yes, okay. So that was my haul from India Untangled. I feel like if I seem a little scatterbrained or tired. It's because I am. Uh, the the Rhinebeck hangover is still in full swing. I feel like I'm barely hanging on to my voice because there was a lot of talking. Um, and yesterday, we, we only stayed for Saturday, but um, on Sunday I woke up and I feel like I was hit by a truck because of all the walking, the talking, and <sighs> yeah, it's an event of sorts, guys. So um, if I seem a little, you know, you know, yeah, that's why. <laughs> so.
so um but anyway yes moving along um i did manage to do some damage at rhinebeck uh but uh thank you to everybody who said hello at the rhinebeck meetup uh it was just so wonderful again just wonderful getting to meet with you uh, i promised you hugs and i got lots of gave lots of hugs got lots of hugs um and i also want to apologize if at some point i did seem a little kind of out of it because yeah i think my introversion kind of kicked in where my batteries my battery level just dwindled and I was barely like um I, I think like after 45 minutes of just talking non-stop I I just kind of was on the fringe of checking out and my you know it's getting a little hungry and then I you know anyway I was not at my best at some point during that whole that whole um meetup so I apologize if I seemed like a little you know tired but anyway enough apologizing for being tired because it happens it happens guys so uh but yes the haul uh is quite amazing um well first of all Afton Onitz uh who is Michael Dwarjan uh I I got to meet up with him at the meetup and uh he so wonderfully and generously uh gifted me this really beautiful scheme he started dyeing yarn as well um and if you're not familiar he's a really talented uh knitwear designer he's had stuff in vogue knit uh vogue knits uh he's actually teaching at vogue knitting live this year uh but he started dyeing and how beautiful is this you guys totally my colors i love it um ooh, there's a fly in here Bella's not, Bella's not earning her keep. Bella, go get that fly. I don't know how that guy got in here, but anyway. Um, but this is his 7525 sock. I'm not sure what content it is. I'm assuming it's superwash merino uh, slash nylon. 75% uh, slash 25%. Um, and this is the extinct colorway, and it's one of a kind. So, but it's so pretty. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Michael. This is awesome. Um, so that was one acquisition, um, and then this was my first Miss Babs purchase. I waited online, and I got me some Miss Babs, finally, because every year at Rhinebeck, the line is out the door. I think it was even longer this time, but, um, I, I made it into the booth, and I came away with two skeins that I thought just had my name all over it. So here they are. And this is a Babette, which I believe is a repeated, repeatable colorway. And this is Shining City. Um, and then I thought it went really well with Sea Glass. So it's kind of like this muted, kind of sagey green. And I, I think it wants to be a party on my needles, or I'm not quite sure. And while I was waiting online uh, to purchase my lovely Miss Babs haul, uh, I got a chance to uh, chat with uh, Amy and Debbie of uh, the Periscoping Sisters podcast. You guys, they are so awesome. Uh, Debbie and Amy, it was really wonderful meeting you for the first time. So truth be told, uh, I have never watched the Periscoping Sisters podcast before uh, because, you know, I've, I've heard of them, but I've never, I've just never gotten around to checking them out. But this week, I'm definitely going to catch up on some of their episodes. And if you have not checked them out, please do. They are wonderful. Uh, I've never seen them on the podcast, but in person, they're just so incredibly lovely. And uh, they both encouraged me while we were waiting online. I saw Stephen West, uh, you know, meeting and greeting people. And I was totally fangirling online. I'm like, I want to go over and say hello. And uh, they're like, no, give us your stuff. You're going to go over there, go say hello to him, get a photo, show him your shawl. So I went on over to him and I don't even remember what exactly I said to him, but I introduced myself, showed him my shawl, um, which is over there. I was wearing the uh, Exploration Station uh, out of my hand-dyed yarn. And, um, you know, we, we got a photo and and, you know, I gave him a hug and I think we, this photo has to be my favorite out of the entire Rhinebeck experience this weekend. Um, but yeah, Stephen, I don't know, he's definitely not watching, but it was really wonderful meeting you and um, I'm glad. Thank you, Debbie and Amy, for uh, encouraging me to get over myself and just go over there and say hello to him. And oh, and I also, when we, as soon as we got there, uh, I, uh, Dennis and uh, my mother-in-law, Dennis's mother, came along with us, uh, you know, to the fairgrounds. And uh, as soon as we walk in, we we're going up to the hill to go to buildings A, B, and C. And lo and behold, there was Sue and Chelsea from the Legacy Knits podcast. There was also uh, Devin and Jenny from Tiny Paper Foxes, or I should say, um, Handmaiden Woolen. Uh, and then there was Connie Knits, who I... 
um, met for the first time. Uh, I, don't, I wasn't familiar with her, but apparently she's a hand dyer of uh, Chile Knits. Uh, so yeah, it was very lovely meeting you, Connie. Uh, and that's where I met the Periscoping sisters again. So, and the hilarious thing was they all had these little unicorn horns on that they, I don't know, I forgot where they said they uh, purchased them, but they were awesome. And I definitely have to get my hands on one of them because they were so cool. And they're like, oh, you know, this is how we're gonna be able to find each other, you know, throughout Rhinebeck. And I was like, that's a brilliant idea. So I, I did purchase more yarn, but wait, that's not all. Uh, so let me see what else did I do. I think the only other booth that I, oh no, 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 I hit up two more booths. So, of course I had to hit up Gail's Art, uh, which I have not purchased yarn from before, but I've been meaning to purchase yarn for quite some time from her. And Gail, by the way, she is so wonderful. She's like the best personality. Uh, she's just so wonderful to talk to, so down to earth. Um, so yeah, it was really great getting to chat with her for a little bit. She is known for her uh, sock blanks, where she does like all these really cool stamps and different effects. And I had to get one. You guys, how awesome is this? It's all like sugar skulls and just a hot pink mess of awesomeness. Yeah, so I cannot be more excited. I, I just saw it and I was like, this is coming home with me for sure. And I don't even know if I want to knit from it. Um, I've never knit from a sock blank before, uh, but every time I see them, I'm just like, how can you knit with it? I just want to frame it and you know, what have you. But maybe I will knit from it and then save one sugar skull and frame that. So that's a possibility. But this is her, um, let me see, it's, it's a sparkle base. So it's 75% um, superwash merino wool, 20% nylon, and 5% silver stellina. Um, and here's her logo. Let's see. Doo, doo, doo. There we go. So yeah, definitely check her stuff out. Um, she's on Etsy, I believe. Um, and of course, <laughs> I saw this and I had to get it. I'm not going to take it out of the wrapper, but... It's a gradient. I've been purchasing quite a few gradients and I haven't been knitting with them, so I think I have my work cut out for me this year. But this is called Nightmare, and it's uh, six small skeins of 150 yards each, uh, 900 yards total. Fingering weight yarn, um, and it's fiber, the fiber content is 60% superwash merino, 20% yak, and 20% silk. And I think the cat caught the fly. Did you catch a fly? Can you catch that naughty fly? I think she caught the fly. Don't eat it. That's just gross. There we go. Um, but yeah, here, here's the back of it. So yes, it's quite luxurious. And of course, yeah, Nightmare, it, it just had my name all over it. Um, and another new to me, um, another new to me, uh, dyer slash fiber artist, uh, is Spirit Trail Fiber Works. Uh, I had gone in there and something about their, like, Normally, I don't know, like, I, I, knowing myself, I wouldn't gravitate towards it normally, but something about, like, their colorways and their aesthetic, I don't know, I just gravitated towards it, and I had a hard time deciding what I wanted. Anyway, Spirit Trail, uh, Fiber Works, yeah, yeah, it's, it's mauve, it's mauve, it's mauve, magically mauve, mauve, I can't talk right now, um, but it's magic mauve, um, but this is their Zalti, uh, base, which is 100% Targi. And it's 600, there's 600 yards in here. So this is a yarn baby, Carlene, if you're watching, it's a yarn baby. Um, <laughs> but uh, it's called, it's, the colorway is Antique Rose. And let me see, but um, yeah, it's so squishy and rustic feeling and not like, it feels rustic, but it's soft at the same time. They actually had a sample knit up on one of their mannequins. And this was actually the first skein that I gravitated towards when I went into the booth. Um, and then I was like, nah, I don't know, I'm gonna put it down. And then I saw my mother-in-law ogling it. She was holding it and then she put it down and then went to look off at the other grid wall. And then, well, behind her back, I went and I grabbed, I grabbed two of them. <laughs> I bought two yarn babies, um, and then, you know, just, I, I made out like a bandit, basically, and I told her, I'm like, you enabled me, you didn't even realize it, um, so yeah, I had to get two of them, so the other one is, the other one's in here, so I have a sweater's worth to knit through, I don't know what pattern it's gonna be, I just knew the color had to come home, so, yeah, that's my haul, um, so, yeah, that is pretty much all the damage that I did this weekend. Um, so what else did I wanna say? It was, it was just, again, words cannot describe how awesome this weekend was. Um, and I think you can probably hear in my voice that I'm losing it. So I won't go on too much longer, but 
Um, yeah, uh, show notes will be on the blog, yarngasmpodcast.com. Um, so check that out. And uh, yeah, I should also mention that today at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, I'm not sure when this episode is going to go up, but uh, I did have some yarn left over, believe it or not. Uh, so that will be going into the shop this evening, uh, Monday, October 17th at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, it won't, obviously, it won't be a, a big update, but uh, I will be having another shop update on Friday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard, Standard Time, a normal update. So um, yeah, definitely check that out. Uh, I will. I hope to podcast later on this week. We shall see if my voice is still alive. But um, yeah, so here's to another year of Rhinebeck, guys. <laughs> um, and yeah, I just I hope everybody else who went to Rhinebeck had an amazing time. I hope you came back with a lot of yarn and fiber and you know just wonderful happy memories. Um, and I really enjoyed browsing Instagram and checking out uh, all of your photos and everything and. Yes. So that said, happy knitting and I will see you next time. Bye.